All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope you all enjoyed your lunch today. Uh, for anybody that wasn't here this morning, my name is Lindsay Warden, and I'm the Executive Director of Holstein Genetic Services for Holstein Association USA. I'm very pleased to be the moderator for the first of our two panels this afternoon for our robotics seminar. Over the next hour, you'll get to hear from a group of dairy farmers who have all worked with robotic milking systems for various amounts of time. I will introduce each of them and ask them to share about their operations and experiences. And then, after all three of them have had a chance to speak, we'll open the floor to some questions. There's, when you first move to robots, there's just so much coming at you. It's a lot. <laughs> it's overwhelming, and then finally, as time goes on and things settle down, and you finally can start pulling out the information, you know, the most important information. Um, they're so sensitive, the data. We get, we'll notice, like, during the summer when you get a cold front coming through, the next day after the cold front with the change in the barometric pressure, the cows will be off five pounds. And it used to drive me nuts. It still drives my uncle nuts. <laughs> Seeing that drop, he goes, oh my God, what happened? But I'm like, all right, give it a day, they'll be back up. <laughs> Um, I agree with the, the collars, just the, the information we get from the collars, the activity, um, the rumination, that was, uh, I was really happy that we had that information. And the somatic cell add-on that we did on ours uh, has been really helpful for our herd. Um, but like um, Brad said, all of the data coming to you at once right now, that's where I am. <laughs> so I'm like, wow, I just love all of this. I mean, I was, I was talking to our vet the other day at Herd Tech that, you know, um, that we're just watching it all the time on our phones. And he's like, so you're not addicted to social media, you're addicted to your, <laughs> your, uh, your robots. I'm like, well, yes. kind of. But it's just so exciting that you, know, you're, you, ha you have this potential in your herd, and now we're, we're getting to see that. So in having all this extra data, you, know, you, you don't have to do as much work to get the information that you need. So you know, you know someone's in heat because it told you. So. I think for me, the the thing that I appreciate the most is finding the sick cows much more quickly than we used to in the parlor. Um, like I said, it comes to my phone within two or three seconds. And since I was at a decided disadvantage before because I rarely got to milk the cows, which like you, I like to milk cows. Um, so then it was a matter of trying to chase people down after the fact. And if the milker forgot to tell you what was going on, then it became a bigger problem than it needed it to be. And now we're finding, whether it's mastitis or ketosis or a lameness issue, you find it so quickly that it can be dealt with before it becomes a bigger problem. So uh, we try to use bulls that are robot ready, but still with a decided consideration to type because we're, reg we're a registered herd and I like pretty cows. And, um, I, but they also need to make milk. So that's, you know, we've always bred, and we also use the health, uh, I use the health trait indexes when selecting bulls. I really watch DPR, um, and that those are the considerations that I use. Yes, I also like to milk pretty cows. <laughs> so I've always wanted, you know, sound feet and legs, um, Outer depth is always an important one. Um, with the robots, you know, those rear teeth placement is super important. Um, I had started breeding robot-ready bulls into the herd um, probably three or four years ago, um, even though I hadn't been convinced about using them. But um, And I also have been breeding um, using only A2, A2 bulls. Um, but now with the, with the robots, we are noticing that there are a couple of um, rear teeth that are too close, so we may have to call on that aspects, but definitely bulls that, um, you know, pr provide a square or udder is better for them. Um, I agree with that, with the udder characteristics. We look at that much more closely now. Um, we always built, built our herd around type bulls. Um, kind of changed a little bit. We still try and keep the good size frame cows in the herd. Um, we did switch to all genomics, <laughs> young, stock, young sires now. Um, which is another aspect of the herd that changed over the last few years because um, it was all proven bulls before this and now I think we're 100% young sires. So, um. The hardest thing, especially where it's still kind of new, is um, a lot of bankers look at debt per cow 
and you can't with robots because it's, it's way off the charts. So you really have to show them what you can do performance-wise and how you can make up that um, debt per cow and how you know your 10-year plan, how you're gonna make it through the, the really tough times you know, when you're still paying everything off. So that, that was a, a big um, challenge for us and for our lender. So for us, even though it was a university project, there were you know funding concerns, obviously. And for us, it was a two component. We also were struggling with keeping ag worker help. And um, all of us know that ours is not a five day a week, eight to four, and people really want that. So for us, it was convincing the university that we could do with two less farm staff if we put the robots in, which we have. Um, one person left and one person retired, and we those positions were gone due to attrition. They were not replaced. And we're now because, like Angie said, you have people, you know, you have this help still, some help. So we've been cross training and using folks at other, not necessarily the dairy, but the dairy folks will help on the crop side and they'll also help at livestock and poultry and vice versa. Some of the crops guys in the winter time will fill in at the dairy barn when they're not making feed. And the second component for us was obviously the, the data generating component of it for research projects and for the students for teaching. So I'd like to talk about labor also, but it's just my uncle and I in the beginning. So, so one of the big things with uh, Laylee, with this bunch of seminars we attended at Empire Farm Days and all, they're like, oh, you're gonna save this much labor. Well, it's my uncle and I now, and it's gonna be my uncle and I afterwards. So I mean, it's not a number we can put into perspective for us. Um, I fell into something very nice. We The mortgage was all paid off by the time I came home. Um, so we, I fell into a clean slate. Um, one of the things we talked about with the banker, and it was, yeah, they're right. I mean, taking on debt for a robot is huge. I mean, it's a huge number, but with the, with the environment you're creating with the robot, I think it's worth it. Like I said, all the bullet points from labor, um, uh, increased production with the cows, the cow's well-being, and then uh, life, you know, your lifestyle. I mean, we were in the barn 3.30 in the morning and then at finishing at six o'clock at night. And it's nice on Christmas day where you're done, at, you know, go out, be done at four o'clock, enjoy a nice evening on Christmas. And it's just so much different and nicer that you can't put, it's hard to put a value on that. I actually meant to mention this earlier, but I was nervous and I forgot. Um, I So some of our future plans are if things continue to go in the direction that they're going in with Herd Navigator and Repro, we plan to actually put our activity system down at the heifer barn and use that on the heifers where we're not there as often to try to improve the reproductive performance there. And we have this nice old holding area from the parlor that actually abuts to the north side of the robot and I could get more stalls in there for some bigger mature cows and milk a few more cows on the on the robot on the high producing side. So that's those are my plans short term. We're still actually in the middle of um, adding on to the existing freestall barn. So we're going to eventually have 120 cows in this barn, but it's still only made for like 80 cows. So um, we're, we're adding on to that barn and we're going to be putting in the Discoveries, which is the vacuum robot. I'm really excited. I'm going to name them Roomba and Squeegee. <laughs> <laughs> so they basically vacuum up. They have a bladder inside. They vacuum up the manure and then they go over to a uh, slaughter floor and dump the manure and then go back. So, so right now, you know, a lot of robot barns end up doing um, alley scrapers or something like that. but. We live on a very high hill and it gets cold and everything freezes. We didn't want to deal with broken chains and anything. So right now we are um, manually, not manually, but with the skid steer, we're scraping the barn twice a day. So um, we feel that once the addition is done and the cows have more room and we're not interrupting them as much, you know, they'll be even more productive. So we're excited about that. Um, something I'd like to see on the robot is maybe um, somatic cell on each quarter. I mean, we do get electrical conductivity on each quarter, but the somatic cell is just on the um, you know the entire milk um, that she's made for that that milking. Um, so that that's something that maybe is down the road. I'm not sure, but um, 
I don't know, we did go with the A5 instead of getting the A4, and we've seen lots of improvements in just the A5 versus the, the previous model, so you know, we're pretty happy five, five, um, five weeks in, so. Um, but I'm looking forward to no more projects for a long time. <laughs> so I'm so glad that I'm not the only one that names the robots. <laughs> Because ours is uh, Knight Rider and Jarvis. <laughs> um, we are looking at the Semite Excel. We don't have it in currently. Um, that's a big thing in the next year or so. Um, long term, I consider the vector system with Laylee and with the way the milk industry going, I truly believe um, everything is going to be kind of an, a niche thing where name brands are going to rule the marketplace, um, and that's something that Laylee has out there, but not in the marketplace yet, is the Laylee Orbiter, and so if you're listening out there, Laylee, we, we, wanted, we wanted the Northeast. So Brad, for folks in the audience that aren't as familiar with Laylee's products, the Orbiter would be? So it's a completely um, automatic milk processing plant that you put right on the farm. Um, there's one in uh, the Netherlands yeah. right now, and I think that's the only one out there. Yeah. I would say spend some time, visit some farms, and don't just go to one. Go to th three or four of each brand and check things out and talk to people and do your homework. Because it's not a one-size-fits-all um, situation. You have to see what's going to work for your cows, your help, and your family and what kind of commitment you want to make to that. <clears throat> That's exactly what I was going to say, is do your homework. Um, you know, we started looking at robots at least four years before we actually put them in. Um, and, and look at both brands, or however many brands there are out there now. Um, go to as many farms as you can, especially close to your area, just so that they have you know, similar feeding and whatnot. I mean, we went to Pennsylvania and visited some, but they feed a lot differently than we feed. You know, they feed concentrate in pellets, and you know, we usually do TMRs up here. So, um, do you know, do your homework on that, and also have a really good support system for in your, in place, especially if you have small children when you're starting up, because nobody wants to have to find a babysitter to watch your kids from midnight to 4 a.m. if you both want to be at the barn. <laughs> I agree with that. Um, as I said, it's six years. We spent six years planning this, and from visiting dairies to what Clay taught me, um, there's no stone you can't turn over and find some new ideas somewhere. I know ideas in Canada are different from down here, so um, don't just limit yourself to, to the Northeast or the U.S. I mean, to go to Germany, Canada, wherever there's robots, because everywhere has different ideas. And with this, I'm a big believer in the technology. Um, this is kind of a, right now it's an older person's game, but I truly believe that with this technology and the robots that it really will entice younger people to come back to the industry. <laughs>